He's a guy is in charge of the guild, and he seems to be good at it. Trades master? Can I tell you more about him? Oberkins. Bex, be with you. I'll have to throw you out. I'll get back to work. Fine. He's alone. Oh, let's ask more. A small slit opens in the door, a pair of orcish eyes appears, some hectic barking sounds reach your ears, and the slit is slammed shut again. You don't seem to be welcome. The Birkin opens the door and looks at your question, raises his hands, we already read that. A small slit. The Birkin opens the door. A small slit. I want to help you guys! Be nice! Ah. Our Birkin opens the door. He looks at you in astonishment and he barks something. He brings two others to his side holding weapons. The three of them watch you suspiciously until you have moved some steps away. And then the first one closes the door. You hear both being shut. Okay, they take. They, he brings two more with weapons to us. We are like a party of fucking six people who could ear fuck them <laughs> in a matter of seconds. Smart move, really smart move, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Strange people. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, we check this house. A young Hoberkian girl, hardly out of childhood, opens the door. She gasps in shock when she sees you and runs screaming into the house. Right away, an older Hoboken woman appears brandishing a poker. Presumably, the woman is alone in the house with her children, and quite obviously, she is terrified of you. We just want to say hello. <sighs> this house is deserted. All the doors and windows are nailed shut. On close examination, though, Queen of Headless finds her that the boards on one window fastened only on one side. The nails at the other end have been pulled out. After checking for passersby, she tries to open the window. It's child's play. You want to break in? Sure. In one corner you see a human skeleton on a small bed of dirty straw. Probably a beggar who sought refuge here and died some time ago. Rats and insects have picked the bones quite clean by now. The garden is made from packed loam, which makes it easy to bury the beggar's remains. This place was made for a perfect hideaway now. Why? Quiet spot. No, we don't need to rest. You can rest here for free, which doesn't make sense. Young working girl. I really don't feel like knocking on every house here. There is someone else who may be of interest. Yeah. Instrument maker Storanyo Vardari. Hi. The twelve be with you. What is your wish? The Birkins? Do you know the Birkins or the Orcs? <laughs> Do you know the Birkins? Oh, I don't know about them. I just know these strange people outside who kind of look like a mix of Orcs and Elves. I have no idea what you are talking about. <sighs> The Hoberkins have been living in town for ages. Of course I know them. All my neighbors are Hoberkins. <laughs> thank you. They are quite musical, but very poor, so they cannot afford my precious instruments. Now and again I lend them good instruments when they have a celebration. Usually I get invited too. Music. It must be very musical. There haven't been any concert performers in Weaver for a long time. It's a cultural wasteland, two barbarians. The last performance I attended was six, no, seven years ago. A Torellian epic. What was his name? In any case, it was performed by four bards and a masked choir. 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 I have no idea. I mean, does people really listen to that caterwauling voluntarily? A magnificent piece. Uh, magnificent piece. Let us run over the instrument maker's heart, mind you. It means you have to sit for a long speech about the art of music and its eminent modern proponents. Bye. Bye. Get lost. We can buy instruments here. And loot. For 112 to cards. I think the better loots you have, the more money you can get at the... 
uh, at a bar or something, but pff, seriously, no. I have a fucking girl. Nothing. Okay, if they want to me to help them, then they are pretty dumb because nope, nothing. Okay, we kind of only have the clue from Tarik about the uh, guild master. Let's ask one of the temples. Perhaps they know what's something. Temple of Pax and Riva. Oh, wait. Uh, the best temple of ever. Praise Tex, Elia Karbeck, asked us to have a look around town. She told us to come to you. The priest gives a friendly nod. <laughs> what would you like to know? What can tell me about the guild? How about information about the guild of the tradesmaster? Ever since a squad of guards disappeared in the sewers, the tunnels below are guild territory. The stories about monsters prowling there make sure that no one dares to stop them. Thank you, I just go to the sewers now. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, yes. And then nobody waits to see that you're fairly unobserved. Then he hurriedly lifts the cover and climbs down. Let's explore the sewers. Hmm. Looks like a sewer to me, yeah? yeah? Yeah. There's the muddy, shitty water. Well, nothing really to write home about. Hello. Huh. I should rest, I guess. The party's pretty tired. They say they're not really um, full of magic. What is this house? Red catcher Xepper de Durban. Hi. Greetings, I'm Xepper de Durban, the city red catcher. Ooh, what can you tell me about the sewers? You know your way? Your way. <sighs> your way. Shit. Epsilon O U R. Yes, yes, that's it. <sighs> Don't you? Of course I do. After all, I spent most of the day down there. I could tell you in some detail where there are plenty of rats and where there are hot daily left. But I very, very much doubt that you would be interested. What about the guild? Do you know anything about the guild of the tradesmaster? Lotu Uichergail became a bit too successful. His competitors banded together and conspired against him, but he escaped the hangman by going underground. Within weeks, he would become the lord of all the city's lowlifes. Within half a year, all the traders involved in the plot were ruined, and not a few of them committed suicide. And word has it, the tradesmaster gave at least some of them a hand with that as well. Yeah, don't fuck with the wrong people. <laughs> I need to drink something. Oh, what the fuck. Hope you're A lot of people think the hope you are behind the orc uprising. <laughs> of course they do. First they are sent to deal with the orcs because no one else wants to do it. Then they are branded traitors for it. Apart from the blind fear of the black pearls, the most significant trait of the townspeople is their sheer stupidity. Hmm. Why? Let's... what's this? It would be one silver each, the red catcher says. I don't wait twice to bargain for discount, but the bad catcher stays firm. I make hardly any profit, as it is, he explains. I need the money to buy the necessary ingredients. After convincing Sever Durban to recalculate the amount of ingredients needed, I then away finally managed to get a discount of one bit. Sever <laughs> Durban builds a remarkable contraption. With a small hand pump, he draws some fluid from a big cauldron above an open fire into a hose that leads to a shower head. A second, smaller cauldron contains clear water for rinsing. The shower head is set above a wooden basin with a lot of holes in the bottom. The, the solution mustn't stay on the skin for too long, so it has to be able to flow straight out, the wet catcher explains. The wet catcher pulls a curtain 
you want to shower in the bazaar or the knees. When Alamay has sat down in the bazaar, Xepat calls out, Close your eyes until I tell you to open them again, and starts pumping. The fluid is itching and stinging on Lenaway's skin, and it's also far too hot. Hopefully the vermin feels the same about it. Shortly afterwards, the stinging subsides. Lukewarm water flows in the shower and the procedure ends. While another way topples off, Dubon asks for his clothes, which he first beats out carefully and dusts with a small atomizer. Then he beats them out again and hands them back through the curtain. After Lene has pulled back the curtain and stepped out, the wet catcher gestures towards the berserk. Next, please. The whole procedure is repeated until all of you are clean. Yay! Our carries were squeezed by one point. Oh well. Goodbye, Xebot. I guess we'd just sleep for a bit. That may be the best option. Oh, it's not a bed here. Wait. Let's sleep for 80 hours. Hmm, 3 hours and 50. Oh well, that's again. Perhaps we can go and have some drinks. Mmm, drinks. Hello, sailors, no. Uh, third hour of night. Oh well, fine, fine, fine. We'll rent another room and sleep to a Thank you. Bye. So there's nothing really to do. I guess we have to wait for something to happen to trigger something. We can yeah. Let's go to this castle. Hi. The castle is closed to unauthorized entry, the guard states in a firm but not unfriendly tone. However, there is a guided tour every Earth day at 2 hours after noon, 3 bits ahead. Every fire day, open maneuvers are held for anyone able to fight during the second hour of the evening. Okay. I have... It is fire day. In the evening. Hmm. When was it? Uh, Every fire day, the second hour of the evening. Oh, that's in three hours. Let's do this. We have something to do. Uh, no. Fire day. That. So let's sleep for three hours. Three. Okay. Thank you. I wonder how they do this without a clock. Oh, I thought they have clocks. Perhaps there's a magical clock spell. It would be kinda awesome. <laughs> We wanna fight. We wanna fight. Oh, second hour of the evening. What? The castle is closed. Uh, second hour of the evening. It is the second hour of the evening, and it's fire day. Second hour of the evening. Wait, evening. It's, it's afternoon. Oh, when is evening? Is it eight? I don't know. When is e officially evening? Hmm. 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 It depends. I don't know. I'm confused.
One second. And I'm back. I wasn't looking for the evening thing. I was just kind of confused because someone was looking in my room. I have not, just no idea if they saw something. Then again, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Um, let's sleep for three hours, I guess, and see what happens. Wait, sleep for three more. Two more. So. Can we now attend this stupid fire day thingy? Um. I want to attend. It is pretty dark. <laughs> Hi. Ah, the maneuvers have already begun, the card tells you, but you can still join in. Sure. Come on, come on. The training officer greets and gives you a wooden training weapon each. After which he starts with a few warm-ups, followed by a lecture on the most common mistakes beginners make. Then he lets you pair up for some training fights. Next you form two groups and prowl the battlements. One group tries to storm the castle using siege letters and finds out that the defenders are in a much better position. The instructor ends the exercise before the first siege letter tumbles over so no one is seriously hurt. To finish the maneuvers you get to fight a stuffed dummy moved by six guardsmen from a safe distance using holds and levers. Some of the participants are dealt some heavy blows this time. Ale for everyone marks the end of the event. After which you find yourself back on the street in a state of complete exhaustion. Oh! Oh! An underway skill swords has been increased by one point. Uh, yes. An underway skill polars have been increased by one point. Well, uh, let's the attack to be increased uh, by one. And the local sword still one coin. Let's just excuse the attack. I don't need to increase parry. Great! Victorian robot is now better at swords. So, yay. It is good for Elden Loco, since he's already retained 20 swords. 16 swords go. Why am I letting you use two handed? Hmm. I go all offensive. I don't give a flying fuck for defense because I have no idea how to calculate this here. Can I? Yeah. Tavik is inside the tavern. Yes, it's John Tavik. Six beer, please. Something to eat. Hi. Well, 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 who have we here? Do come in and take a seat. I assume you've got some questions to ask me. Go on then. You're free to ask me anything. <coughs> Mind you, the answers aren't free. They require some more payment. Let's say one silver for starters, all right? Okay, Hoberkins. What do you know about the Hoberkins? The Gulick clan has been living in Riva for decades. And all the Hoberkins in town are part of it. They are only suffered in town, certainly not respected, as is evident by their by their being buried from some establishments. The Hoberkins live in the slums to the north of town. Most humans who used to live there sold their houses and moved away. Anything more? They are quite peaceful and lead a very unassuming existence, which makes quite a contrast to the rest of Weaver City. Three. These days the Hoberkins are jeered at in book public. The Hoberkins earn a large part of their sustenance by trading with the surrounding orc tribes on commission of the local merchants. They are raking the profits from it, while the Birkins are cheated. Birkins? That's all I can tell you. I don't want to take your money off for knowledge you couldn't use. What about the guild? All the beggars, thieves and other criminals of the town have joined together in it. Since the trade master became the gang's uncorned head, the guild has become more popular than the city guards. Since then, most of the guild's activities are aimed at the authorities, and the common citizen isn't bothered. It is it said that Loto takes from the rich and gives to the poor. A sure way to become a popular hero. Well, let's end the talk. And end the video. <laughs> I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will see each other soon. So take care and goodbye.